coffee guy here with another episode of our coffee journey. I want to think about the journey that I was on, but I also want to think of the journey that most people are on that end up roasting coffee. How many of you have heard the story of somebody taking a hot air popcorn popper, putting green coffee in, turning it on, and learning how to roast with a popcorn popper? And then from that, home roasting companies have sprung out, and that's kind of developed into lots of different styles of home roasters. I'm not going to get into all of those. I'm just going to share with you uh, my journey. Well, my journey is backwards because we started off with a Toper 10 Kilo. And we started off a roasting company before we knew how to roast. We were starting a training internship for ministry and business. And we were doing this in our church and somebody, I asked God for three miracles. Because I felt like God wanted this more than I did. And I said, okay, if you want this more than me, here's three things I'm asking for. Number one, I'm asking for uh, a coffee roaster because now I've been, I had been selling machines and setting up bars and people were saying, where do we buy our coffee? And I was sending them to another roaster in, out of Chicago at the time. And then I thought, you know, if we had our own roaster, and then I thought, you know what, we should be training people for ministry, not just sending them out. And we should be training people uh, with coffee more than what we are. And so we started a coffee or a barista school. I think we were the second barista school that I know of. And we were in Muncie, Indiana. And we had, I remember having one of our first schools, we had Matt Riddle, who was, oh gosh, I don't remember the year he was the National Barista Champion. Him and Amber Sather from Intelligent, Intelligentsia Coffee came down and did a school for us for three, two or three days. And we would help plan out, and then we would do barista training and laying out your space, and, and what is it like to run the business, and what is it right to run the the science of understanding coffee and what is the art side of it and how do you pour latte art. And so we were training people to be better business owners by helping them learn the skills and the art and the science of coffee. And so in that period of time, uh, we had many interesting people in our coffee school. We had Chris DeFerio, who was, I think, four or five times national latte art champion. Uh, we went to, we were mobile, so we went to Hawaii and did one, and uh, we had the, the national champion as well as the international champion uh, that year, and we did training in, in Kona, Hawaii. Now, when we talk about this thing of getting started into roasting, I've really talked about training, but let's go back to getting started. Hot air popcorn poppers, people are still using that same principle and modifying popcorn poppers, hot air roasters. And today you can buy a civets roaster, it's a fluid bed roaster. What it is, it's air roasting, basically. And most people have drum roasters. More of the reputable companies I know of have drum roasters. And you know, people argue which is the best roaster and all. But where do you start? Well, I then went to what is called a hot top roaster. And it's an electric one and you can have it in your house, but it controls the time and it controls the temperature and it roasts small, real tiny batches of coffee. It's just right for somebody learning to home roast. And then we went to, um, we went to uh, the bigger roaster was a 10 kilo toper and now I'm using, starting over in Florida, I'm using a Turkish roaster. It's a three kilo, it does about five pounds really well. And so, uh, and then we have for our sample roaster, we have what's called an ARC, A-R-C. And uh, it's, a, it's a roaster from China. I'm very impressed with it because with this roaster, you have basically the gas pressure, you have airflow, and you have control of the fan, the drum speed, and it will read to a computer or even a cell phone, and you can chart your roast and save it and keep it for, for repeating that roast profile again. 
And so these are, this has been my roaster journey, but what about you? You could get a hot air popcorn popper starting out, then you can move to a hot top roaster. There's other uh, Belmores, there's lots of home roasters. Here's what you want to look for, something that controls your air as well as the temperature and the speed of the drum. It's, it's going to be uniform. And so you want to look for roasters like that. Now there's lots of people into this game now, and uh, Sweet Maria's is probably one of the bigger ones, but there's lots of places you can go uh, for roasters. Now, I want to even show you a picture of our first, my first sample roaster. It was a J. Baz Burns double, uh, double sample roaster. And uh, by that, you could, uh, you could, it had a flame and you could adjust that and it had airflow on the cooling part and it did not have a temperature reading and we shot it with a, with a, uh, with a, a gun, a heat sensor gun. And so um, that's what we were doing at first and then dumping it out and then blowing out the chaff. But this is like the classic antique roaster. I know that many people really desire the old style Jabez Burns uh, roaster, uh, which later be became Probat. And uh, oh my goodness, there's so many out there, I can't even name them to you. But I had the old classic Jabez Burns. It was a great classic roaster. Now, I had to sell its heat because things were rough for me for a period of time. But that is when I moved to the hot top and now I have the ARC roaster. So what is your journey like getting into roasting? Can you do it backwards like I did? Well, I asked God for a miracle. I asked him for a house. I asked him for a commercial roaster. And uh, I wanted to, and I wanted to have teachers and a, and, and a way to to study and then learn to do business and ministry at the same time. So we had a two-year ministry program where people learned to do barista work and they learned to do uh, roasting work. And we paid you money and you left with no debt and you left with a skill set. Well, that was a miracle. God gave us a house and he gave us, <laughs> at the time, a $14,000 roaster, which, you know, 20 the year 2000 was a big deal. So there weren't a lot of classic micro roasters back then, but now they're everywhere. But you're interested in coffee. What is your journey like? Contact us if you want our input and help. We're happy to help you and assist you in your journey as you go towards coffee. Thank you. This is Guy from Vecino's Coffee Guy.